Wizard has done so, so much, more than most people would ever do with and to a car to try and find this noise, and you are defeated. I am defeated on this one, short of tearing stuff apart and going deep into it. And I don't want to do that and then not find what it is and then totally waste both of our time. Ah. Drowning out the noise is a good way to do it. Yeah. Like a Bristo. If you just rev past 3,000 RPM really fast, you don't have to worry about the noise at all. <laughs> Welcome to Hoovies Garage, the dumbest automotive channel in all of YouTube. And today we're going to talk about Lambo life and really is owning a fleet of Lamborghinis or any one vintage Lamborghini worth it? And today it's going to be very hard for me to say yes because I'm having a challenging day with my car, starting with this. But before I dive into the Lamborghinis, let me give you a little background of myself. I am a complete and utter moron. I started making YouTube videos to hopefully pay for an Acura NSX payment. So this is almost six years ago, writing on a blog with Doug DeMuro. And well, the car was kind of boring. Nothing really happened to it so I traded it for a Ferrari 355 that was way more exciting but it burned to the ground and then I switched to a Testarossa that had title problems I had to give that back so I bought a McLaren MP412C an early one that had lots of issues one engine replacement two transmission replacements and uh, well that car terrified me so I traded that for a Gallardo which was a fantastic car a very reasonable Lamborghini to own but once again not very exciting for YouTube videos so I traded that off for a Project Mercy Lago, which had a bad transmission, a bad clutch. We'll visit that one today, fix that. And then, well, this amazing deal popped up on two Lamborghinis a few miles from my house. This 1989 Lamborghini Countach and a 1997 Lamborghini Diablo VT Roadster that were $250,000 for the two cars. I didn't disclose the price two years ago, but I am now. It was all the money I had in the bank and then some. I had to shake myself upside down, sell some things to write that check. Now, I didn't disclose what I was going to pay for these two cars because I thought I was going to be smart and sell one of them, keep the other, most likely the Countach, and be able to basically own one of these for free or nearly free by selling the other one, but I needed to fix some issues first, and then I started getting attached, and then more issues popped up, more issues needed to be fixed, and here we are a year and a half later, and I'm still dealing with issues, and I've still kept both cars. Today, we're going to take this one up to the Car Wizards, which uh, won't start right now because it's been sitting for not quite two months, and the battery went dead, to take it to have some leaks fixed that I've been waiting to fix since... Well, I noticed them in January because the Diablo has been up at the Car Wizards trying to chase a noise, and the Wizard finally has some news for me. In addition, we're going to check on the Murcia Lago, which has been sitting basically all winter. And throughout this trek, which really is a dream come true and possible because you all watched these videos and got me to this insane level of a collection, uh, we're going to decide if all of this trouble really is worth it. I'm seeing a lot of people that are selling their Lamborghini Countach's recently because they've escalated in value so, so quickly. Cars that were on the Countach rally that people love, so they're going to keep them forever, that are coming up for sale because, well, do they want to deal with these constant issues? And when they're worth a point that there are that you can buy yourself a really, really nice Aventador or a lot of other things, basically a lake house if you wanted to, is it really worth owning these cars. And the more I visit people who own Lamborghinis, the more I see, well, they're dealing with issues more than they're actually enjoying the cars. The last time I was in Utah, I visited James, the Stradman. He had his anniversary Mercia Lago, which was fantastic, but he was driving it to the dealer for a valve adjustment service that those cars need regularly. And it's not an LP car, thankfully, because if it was an LP car, it would need an engine out, which is what Ed Bullion, unfortunately, has to deal with because his car is needing a clutch and it's needing a valve adjustment because it's misfiring, as you saw, in the last car trek and he's never paid for an engine out on a Lamborghini ever and so he's sort of putting it off. So he has a car that works but you know kind of doesn't and same with my friend Freddy Tavares Hernandez. He has two Lamborghinis or I guess three now with that Jaguar powered one which is kind of a half I suppose. He still has issues with the Gallardo and drivability and the top not working and the Mercy Lago as cool as it is as wonderful as a restoration as it is there's always going to be something on it. There's always going to be some lights on, some things to deal with. It's usable, but it has issues. And that's basically the story of every single Lamborghini owner with a vintage one like a Mercy Lago and back. Uh, that I know. That's what they tell me. And I am living that life right now as I have to jump off my Countach to drive to the car wizard. So, shall we? When you hear those cannonball run noises this car makes, 
I mean, you fall back in love every time, even if you're over six foot tall and you don't fit in it. Right now I have this seat all the way forward so I can recline it as far back as possible. And I'm still slouched in the seat. My head's hitting the ceiling. I do not fit in this car, which is absurd because I'm not that tall of a guy, six foot two. And this is, you know, a car from 1989, not 1960. And of all the cars, we'll let that Fiesta go a little bit ahead here. This one has had the most rewarding experience, I would say. It has always worked. It has never left me stranded. And listen to that. It's just unbelievable. When I shipped this thing to California for the Countach rally, the 50th anniversary, this car performed flawlessly. And there were, you know, half a dozen cars that went down there. They were all fixed and working by the end of it, though. And that is saying something. These cars are pretty mechanically robust compared to Ferrari that have their issues, like with the Testarossa, where if you launch it, say you dump the clutch, you risk blowing up the differential, things like that. There's not a big gotcha type of thing with these cars. Other than age, this thing is, well, going on 35 years old, and it's never had its engine taken out to kind of reseal everything. And, and unfortunately, that's what a lot of them will need. In my case, I just keep fixing every little leak that pops up and not going for the full tamale and spending, you know, fifty or or $100,000 to have the engine out and go through this thing. And instead, I'm just getting, you know, pecked to death. But man, what a fantastic way to be pecked to death, other than the fact that I absolutely do not fit in this car. But the dilemma is, as much as this car is a dream come true to own and sounds and looks fantastic, there are other cars that I could buy that would be much more rewarding in, say, the ownership and driving experience where I'm not dealing with all these issues. Like, say, a Ford GT from 2005 or 2006. That remains one of the favorite cars I have ever driven, and I could sell this car and easily buy one of those. They've kind of appreciated it in the same sense as the Countach. You could also easily get the best modern, you could also easily get, you could also easily get the best modern Aventador as long as it's not an SV or an SVJ or so many other options. Or you could just pocket a lot of money and get say a 911 Turbo S and just have a car that'll never break and be so much faster than well this thing ever will be. Or say a vintage one and you get the vintage 930 Turbo, big turbo experience for a fraction of the money of the Skuntosh. And that's the dilemma. And that's the dilemma I'm gripping with. The fact that I have a YouTube channel where these issues are good because it means content definitely helps my case. But for you all, if you're thinking of buying your first vintage exotic, you got some money together, I don't know. But let's continue up to the car wizard where we'll check on the Diablo and, well, what the noise is or isn't. Or is it still there? Oh, wizard. It's just so good. It, it has a soul, doesn't it? It has a soul, and the soul definitely bites you in the butt. But when it works, which this car has always worked, it's just issues. Mm -hmm. It's glorious. Maybe not as glorious as a Nissan Rhino Cross Cabriolet, though. Oh man! And you're get a, you got it, and you got it held up by Wood Wizard. Yes. This yep. is this isn't mine. I kind of wish it was. I got some slack in the fabric, so I can reach in and start testing magnetic switches inside of it. Oh, the top doesn't work on the Murano at 60,000 miles. That's, mm -hmm. What a shame. But uh, actually, there is a real shame here. It's not this, my unfortunate Beck Spider that had the winding transmission. It's back at Rancho Transmission getting fixed, so that's a good thing, but it looks like... What'd you say it looked like? It looked like it had been through a hurricane. It's kind of the leftovers of it. it. It's all blown up in the back, for sure. They did enjoy your door hinges. Oh, yes, for the hatch? Yeah. I mean, that's quality there. It's nice and brass. Mm -hmm. Your Ferrari's coming along? Yes, the fuel injection conversion is coming along now. Very good. Well, my Ferrari's still waiting on parts, which mm -hmm. are coming actually pretty soon. Today or tomorrow. You know, it's not as bad getting parts now for Ferraris as it is like normal cars because of the Shanghai ports and everything oh, yeah. else, right? I know. It's <laughs> so going to get worse. Italians are better, but uh, not all Italians. You have to know what's wrong with them in order to fix them, right? And this one, we do not know what's wrong with it. So, this Diablo, for a year and a half now, we have been dealing with this moan at a certain RPM. You drive it up to this RPM, and it starts moaning, and you have tried so many things. Wizard has done so, so much, more than most people would ever do with and to a car to try and find this noise, and you are defeated. I am defeated on this one, short of tearing stuff apart and going deep into it. And I don't want to do that and then not find what it is and then totally waste both of our time. So we have the location kind of narrowed down, right? It's right there at the firewall. It's right 
at the firewall in the middle somewhere. Yes. And all of these pipes and things. And it's not where any of the accessories are because they're all they're all right here. Yes. Something is causing this this mechanical resonance, as you called it, right? It's, it's almost like a clarinet reed or something. It's weird. So you've put it all back together, and I just have to live with the noise. Unless you want to pull the motor and dive in. Yeah, but we could spend all that money and then not fix it. And we may not find it, that's right. <sighs> So I've bought chassis ears, microphones, we've done all kinds of things, driven it, used uh, stethoscopes. I've also, uh, while it was running, I mounted the engine. Yes, you climbed on top of the V12 while it was running. You laid across the car mm -hmm. and, and listened with a stethoscope and you couldn't narrow it down. You could hear the echo in the background. You could hear the noise being made. But everything I checked, there was nothing there. And when we do research on a car like this, I mean, they didn't make very many. There's not a lot of people working on them outside of the dealer. And you actually did find a post from like 15 years ago, right? Yeah, it's in Jupiter, Florida, and it's a silver 97 VT Roadster with the same exact symptoms, like 2400 to 3200 RPM moan, and they never find the solution. Is it the same though. car? I think it could be. So this car 15 years ago was in Florida, then Texas, then sold to the guy, the neurosurgeon that mm -hmm. I bought it from who had it 10 years. So maybe it's just been moaning for that long and it's happy to moan. Nobody has solved it since then, and we haven't today either. You know, the good news is the Capristo exhaust kind of drowns it out. If you drive the car hard, it doesn't really moan that much, right. if at all. Mm -hmm. And with the top off, it may not be as bad. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the top off, I'm going to drive it, and I'm going to see... Because I was trying to get it to make the moan before. Now, if I just drive it, how bad is it really? It's really not that bad. Well, you're saying it's it. It's more but... annoying than anything, but it's not like it's blaring loud. The one nice thing about all this is... Since you didn't find it, there's no bill? That's right, there is no bill. There's something to smile about, I suppose. So I'm leaving here scot-free, huh? Most shops would hand you a bill. Right. But I won't do that to you. Well, thank you. This is the reality with any mechanic shop. You win some, you lose some, and unfortunately, you could be an easy job and you quote somebody that easy price, and then a bolt breaks or whatever else, and you can decide to charge them or not. And most mm -hmm. of the time, you don't, which you're very nice in that sense. But, yes. uh, yeah, you'll make it up, I'm sure, with plenty of other Lamborghinis and things and mm -hmm. uh, Beck Spiders and everything else that falls apart. My Land Rover, too. That's been kind of a fight, huh? Yes. We found that the calibration is completely out of whack. Somebody in the past has calibrated to the point where some of the sensors, when you go to different ride On the suspension, yeah. They don't yeah. Even match. They don't, they're all way out of whack. So we're going through and clearing it out and redoing the calibration on it. Okay. Well, the Mercy Lago was the other one I'm going to go visit. I'm going to drive this car to the Mercy Lago and check it out. I've driven in a while as well, and we did have an issue with the uh, squeaking of the belts that was, I mean, that took almost a year to figure out. Different, like, tensioners and alignments and everything Shins else. and things, yeah. I, that was a fight that you won. I won that one. You did win that fight, but uh, this one's just, you know, it is what it is. It is so pretty, though. It is pretty. Is it worth the trouble? I think so. Once you're cruising in it, you'll forget about it. Okay, well, I'm gonna do just that. Thank you, wizard. Ah. Drowning out the noise is a good way to do it. The Capristo. Well, this is the first time with the Capristo and the roof off, and are you ready for this? Awesome. It definitely captures the exhaust note that the Countach is sort of iconic for, but a little more throatier, a little bit deeper, I should say. And, well, there's the moan. I can hear it, kind of, but not really, not really. And all I have to do is shift, and the noise is gone because I'm in a lower RPM. It's a certain RPM. If I want to hear it moan, I can make it moan all day long, but if you shift below or above a certain RPM, it goes away. So really not a big deal. If you just rev past 3,000 RPM really fast, you don't have to worry about the noise at all. <laughs> and unlike the Countach, this Diablo is so dang comfortable of the three cars. It is definitely the best fitting for me. Obviously, no roof uh, I can fit, but also the seats are really, really comfortable. Way more than the Murcielago for some reason. And the Murcielago just doesn't feel quite as special as this, but the Mercy is more fun. 
with the Mercy Lago, you have modern power and conveniences and the paddle shift, which makes it kind of fun. So each of the cars really do scratch a different itch. So I guess I can justify keeping all three. Well, I'm a little proud of myself with the Mercy Lago because I planned for winter hibernation and it was plugged in and it started right up because the battery goes dead on this one every five days or so if you leave it to sit. And of course, it has the permanent airbag light because the driver's side airbag is just kind of, well, died. It's $5,000 to replace, except you can't get them. So really, none of my cars are working. They are all permanently broken and that is totally normal for a Lamborghini. Now, is it worth it in dealing with the constant headaches and trying to keep on top of all the problems? Uh, well, I think so. But if you are OCD and every one of your cars has to be perfect, well, I don't think old Lambos are the cars for you. There's always going to be some quirk, some problem you're going to have to live with until you get to the next service. Some problem you're always dealing with or something you have to live with, and that's just absolutely Lambo life. Other automakers, other exotics seem to do it a lot better in that sense, but they don't have the soul, the fun of these cars. They don't look like this, obviously. So. I guess I did justify it. I started out today thinking, man, I'm going to be pissed off at all these cars because this one still moans and the Countach is leaking all over the place. But really, <laughs> I love the things. I'm happier than a pig and you know what. Thank you for watching.